Well, we haven't done any Hearthstone videos since May, and we have a Friday where we have no videos to post because we just finished both ongoing series yesterday. So, uh, let's do some Hearthstone. It's been so long that either two or three expansions have come out since then, so we could even play something like Ultimate Infestation Jade Druid, and that would be new. We'll see what we do for the second video, but, uh, for the first, this is a Hunter deck I've been running recently. It's like 28 and 5. Granted, that's all between rank 15 and 20. So, you know, as usual on this channel, we're not trying to get Legend. We're just trying to make do with what we have. So what the hell is happening here? Well, we have some interesting one-of choices that are kind of meant to flush out the mid-game because the early game and the end game are both pretty solid. So in the early game, one of the new tricks we have is Dire Mole. Just a 1-3 for 1. But he's a beast, which means he has great synergy with Crackling and Razor Maw. Adapt has those nine different effects, and two of the primary ones you can get are plus one, plus one, which makes Dire Mole a 2-4, or plus three attack, which makes Dire Mole a 4-3. And all of a sudden on turn two, you've got those two creatures on the board, and things are looking up. We're running one Galaka Crawler because, I don't know, in theory, if we were seeing a lot of pirates, and we would be at the higher ranks, this would be a great tech card. But it's also just a 2-3 beast for two. Alley Cats are also here because turn one plays are extremely important as the meta evolves. And it's two options that can potentially stay alive for Crackling Razor Maw, although they're not as good as Dire Mole. So then it's like, okay, so we have early minions on the board, Kindly Grandmother pops out essentially two different minions, and all of that leads into Scavenging Hyena, which can get huge and be difficult to deal with in the early game. Even just an Alley Cat on turn one, your opponent plays some kind of like two health minion not realizing and you drop this on turn two and crash the two alley cats into it, all of a sudden you have yourself a 6-4 on turn two. That's pretty good. We got two animal companions, even though I think they're actually kind of falling out of favor a little bit just because of the random nature of it, but all three are still decent outcomes. One bear shark just to have something else that we can just drop on turn three, and because it makes for some interesting things that can happen with, say, uh, Houndmaster, plus two, plus two, and taunt, and you can't target it, it's pretty good. Same thing with Crackly and Razor Mods, another really good target for it. Only one skill command. <laughs> Mostly so we have some kind of finisher and some kind of options. We do have a lot of beasts, so it's pretty easy to get to deal 5 damage. Only one Unleash the Hounds. It's kind of an anti-aggro for other decks that are only aggro. We're kind of a blend. Also pairs nicely with Cult Master for drawing potential, which is tough in Hunter. And ah yes, the Vicious Fledgling. So the goal is, essentially, we play, say, a Dire Mole, turn one. We make it huge and something that's tough to deal with, with the Crackly and Razor Maw. And then on turn three, as they're already struggling to deal with those things, we drop the Vicious Fledgling, and now they have to decide, okay, what am I dealing with here, because there's a lot of threats on board. If this gets Wind Fury, it's basically win condition for us. It can be very difficult to clear this out in the early going, so, yeah. So there's the early game stuff, and then the late game, we're basically giving ourselves options when we're fighting against control, or against mid-range or value decks that are going to squelch our early game, and then we still have some other answers. There's one nesting rock in here, it's also kind of anti-aggro. It's very easy for us to have two minions on the board through a variety of means, and even if we don't, it's a 4-7, and it's a beast, so I mean, we could do worse. This is one I crafted, I haven't actually drawn this one, but... I'm not entirely sure how good the Zombeasts are, but they're awful fun. So that gives us kind of limitless potential for the end game. Since our draw engine always sucks as a hunter, this is a way to draw cards without actually having to draw. Two Savannah High Mains because they might as well have the legendary border on them. One Swamp King Dread just because it's an interesting thing for people to have to deal with. One Call of the Wild, I did used to have two in this because it just it's a nice little swing for you on the board. And one Nzoth, because we have two Savannah High Mains, we have an Infested Wolf, we have two Kindly Grandmothers, and all those things basically say, hey, resummon us, swing the board. Plus, there's some potential for shenanigans if we have Deathstalk or Rexar minions that can also count towards this. So yeah. Let's let that rock for a game, see how it goes. Don't worry, it's going to load this sometime. We're going to get there. I'm going to summon as kind of like a channel catch-up. I don't really just post videos of me talking. We kind of use other vehicles to do so. But uh, We have Trails of Cold Steel starting Monday, too. Rex 
Alexa the sequel. Versus Thrall. That'll be nice. Already have some videos recorded for that. Michaela was super excited coming off the ending, considering how crazy everything gets there. So instead of doing something else like Persona 5, like we talked about, or some other options, we just jumped right in. Now we didn't, well, I was going to say we didn't draw any of our one drops, but there it is. We were going to coin out Kindly Grandmother in that spot, but in, never mind. Shaman, a class you're not really currently seeing a lot of in the meta of this particular expansion ever since Kobolds and Catacombs came out. Mostly because there weren't very many good decks to begin with. And then they nerfed the hell out of uh, all the evolve options. Um, hmm. Let's not be greedy. This is our turn two board. It's pretty good. I'm sure we could run into Lightning Storm or some nonsense, but whatever. We don't have a whole lot invested in this. It's just these things work well together. <laughs> I'm intrigued by the idea of just coining out Colt Master and drawing three and clearing the board. He's going to be stuck on Overlimit next turn. I think I want to do that. I think it's funny. Might not be the best play, but... Since when are we making the best plays in this? If we were, we would be going for Legend or something. It's a pretty nice draw, too. We've really gotten all of our low-end options, and we haven't drawn anything on the high side so far. Which is great. Now, I haven't decided what we're going to do for the other playthrough on the channel right now. Might not be anything for a little bit, just to let me catch my breath a bit. Um, I best want to build this board. No, I like this better. <laughs> just because it creates more problems. So, I mean, we're going to see. We also finished Odyssey last week, or this week, yesterday. <laughs> Today's Friday, good lord. Hmm. I mean, if we want to draw through the rest of our deck, we have Unleash the Hounds in hand. Uh, how do we want to deal with this? Kill Command and the Razor Maw is certainly easy. Yeah, I think that's fine. What we're going to do is this and this. Mouse is feeling a little finicky today. I don't know if you're noticing some of these clicks, but uh, battery might be getting low. Not entirely sure what Master Baker's deck is here. We've seen a couple of taunty stuff. Totems, I guess, are fine. Someone called. Still feel like we're in pretty good shape. This is kind of too fun not to do. We're almost going to overdraw from it. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to hit. No, not like that. Like this. Get that out of the way. And we're going to hit here. Then we're going to hit here and there and there. You can see why this is a problem. We're gonna hit the face as well because this seems like a thing that would be good to do.
Yeah, when this deck clicks, it can be a real pain in the ass to deal with. Now, we had a phenomenal draw. We have to recognize that from the front. But even that doesn't really concern us. That's four of his seven mana. We're still showing 10 damage on board, plus a hero power. So, uh, I think we've done it. Go, Dire Mole. Finish him. Let's do one more. That went pretty fast. So yeah, Cold Steel 2 on Monday. Michaela was very excited. I'm excited because I think it's better than the first game. Versus Thrall! For Doomhammer. Let the, the first game begin. is kind of, I don't want to say paint by numbers because that implies that it's super simple and that's not really what I mean. But it is more formulaic. The second one gets to play around with the freedom that it has from not having to be a first game in a series. At this point, you already have established characters and a world that you've built, so it can do a lot more things. No turn one. Wah, wah. All right, I think we'll do this one. I try to be greedy with my hyenas and not just play them out. It's nice to play them out and immediately be able to buff them in some way. Even if it's just one creature, a two mana 4-3 is pretty damn good with upside. It's not too bad for us. I don't think I want to play the fledgling just yet. Oh, Alright, we can walk into like... I don't know. A couple different spells here. Certainly the worst outcome for us, though. Alright, that's fair. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to have zero mana next turn. Never mind. <laughs> no, he won't. Um... Still, that was a lot to clear a board that we hadn't invested a ton in. Do I want to just Hyena here, or do I think the Fledgling's more exciting? I think I think the Fledgling's more exciting. Run away. Maybe we can Hyena Hero Power. It's a 4-3 on board instead of a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> we have some awkward turns coming up because we haven't drawn nearly as well as we did last time. But that's okay. Surprised. Ultimately the same result for us either way, so it didn't really matter. Here we don't have much of a choice. But the next couple turns are looking up, although I'm sure one of them at least is going to run into Hex. Ah. The old 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> Really have an answer for it at the moment, so that's about the best we can do. Still, four mana left for Hex. Do you hear its call? Oh. Listen closely. Listen closely. Um, I actually don't think I want to dread here. I like that. Let's do that. Now 
No, we're still in danger of being lightning stormed or something, but... Since the Fledgling is such a threat, I'm actually surprised he did that instead of the Cold Master, to be honest. Since he summoned a second taunt. But I suppose I don't necessarily blame him either. Alright, how do we best want to clear this off? We could just throw our entire board at the 7-8. That's a viable option. We can draw two off of it as well. I think I like that. I'll just draw while we can. Alright, now... I think I'm most intrigued by just getting something nice set up here a little bit. Only five mana for him this turn since he lost three to the Overload for his big old Elemental. I'm going this route because I wouldn't mind having a couple minions on board for when Call of the Wild drops, if that's the route we end up taking. There's a couple ways we can do that. Even if that wolf dies, we can turn into two little one ones that'll become surprisingly difficult to deal with. I assume he's not even going to attack. Correct. Now, do we want to do anything else? No, I think this is just too good. So we're going to toss this away. That. This. Not terribly worried about Cthune. Although we don't have a great way to deal with it at the moment. Oh, spell power again. Didn't get it. So now he's going to have to get lucky on the big five. He did not. But he's got ways to deal with it. Not a big deal. Not really all that worried about any of that, to be perfectly honest. Although we do have to worry about Cthulhu starting next turn with 10 mana. Let's see. Let's do this first. See what we get. Okay. All right. Haven't seen any hexes yet. This is certainly looking like it. But Cthune. Um, well, here's the funny thing. This is a beast. <laughs> hmm. How do we want to go about this? I think we're doing this for sure. I think this is too funny not to do. And uh, I think we're just going to do this. Now, Cthune could mess us up a little bit, but he also has a good chance of not even having drawn it yet. Half his deck is still in there. Okay. Good draw here would be quite helpful. That is a pretty damn good draw. <laughs> Alright, so we're certainly doing this. And we're certainly doing this. Now. Okay, here. Do I want to just throw all the beasts at it? Is that the best way? No. The best way is to keep the taunt up. So, we do that. Do that. Do that. And do a face. He has no cards in hand, and we have a taunt blocking access to our hyena, so he's going to have to have top decked something good here. Uh, 
He top decked a good one. Not a great one, but a good one. So he's got to do it again. No, you can't target that. I'm very sorry. Hmm. That helps him. means we no longer have lethal on board as it is. But what did he draw? He was trying to target one of our enemies. This I think I love no matter what it is, to be perfectly honest. Kill the 1-3. You could kill the 0-1 with whatever that spell is and then trade your 4-4 four, four into my 4-3 if you're worried about it. Always little time. You already put two storm cracks, so it's not that. Lava bird. Hmm. I really didn't want to get rid of the four five or the four four, which I guess I get. Alright. So uh that's lethal. Had a couple routes that would have done the same thing. Really, the taunt was the only bad outcome there. I mean, that wasn't terrible. We could have kept pressing the advantage still. So, yeah. That's the Hunter deck. I'll be doing one more video today since we've been doing two a day for so long now with another deck. But that's the plan for the channel going forward. We'll just have kind of a filler day today. The weekend off as usual. And then we jump into Trails of Cold Steel 2 on Monday. And possibly something else. We have a couple other things that we've recorded that I might be pairing with Cold Steel 2 next week, but those will be a surprise.